for the safety of your smile, use Pepsodin twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. P E P S O D E N T. Spell Pepsodin. Use Pepsodin. Use Pepsodin. Pepsodin presents the Charlotte Greenwood program with Matty Melnick and his orchestra, the famous hits in the mist, and starring that long, lovable lady, Charlotte Greenwood. <laughs> An annual event of some importance is taking place today at 114 Hinkle Street. Properly dressed for the occasion, and with her sister and their star of order in attendance, we find Charlotte Greenwood cleaning out the attic. Jane, uh, just set those old books over there. We'll put them out in the garage. My, what a mess. Oh, yes. Yeah. I didn't realize we had so much junk, Charlotte. I think it grows here. See, I've lived in a lot of places, and they all had attics, but I never saw one as full as this one. Don't you ever clean it out, Charlotte? We clean it out every year, but somehow it never seems we never get rid of anything. Well, hey, you're not going to throw away these old books. Gee, I'd like to read these. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> oh, look at it. Look, Dick Merriwell tries again. I bet that's interesting. Yeah, you'll find a fascinating copy of Ned Crabtree's Triumph, or Never Say Die, in there, too. Oh, here's a book by a man named Jones called How to Be a Successful Novelist. Uh Uh-huh, that's the only book he ever had published. (laughs) But come on now, this isn't getting the attic cleaned up. Here, that old chair goes downstairs. Oh, I'll set it by the set. Pinky, you can... Pinky McCleaver, what are you doing? Uh, Oh, uh, I was just looking over some old letters. Here's a whole box of them, Charlotte. Yes, I know. Put them back in that drawer. They're, um, well, they're personal. Oh, are they yours? I didn't know. No, you couldn't tell by the envelope where it says Miss Charlotte Greenwood. Oh, I didn't look at the envelope. I couldn't tell by the letters either. They all start out, my lovely rosebud. Huh? Or little cornflower. <laughs> or sweet... <laughs> little cornflower? Yeah, never mind. I know the corn is green, but the flower is gone. <laughs> Still, little cornflower. This one here says... Pinky, give me those letters. Now, Uh come on now. Let's get something done here. Jane, those flower pots go downstairs, and Pinky, that chair goes out in the garage, and that little sewing table, too. (laughs) Little (laughs) cornflower. Where'd you ever get so much junk, anyhow? All this broken-down furniture and stuff. Well, Jane and I bought a lot of it at auction. I've got two piles of stuff started in the backyard. Now, the one beside the back porch goes in the garage, and the other pile is for the junk man. Okay, I'll take a load downstairs now. Where is this go, cornflower? Hmm. All that stuff over there is junk. Now, be careful now and don't try to take too much. I'm all right. Let me get my arm through this step ladder. Here, pile those magazines up under my chin, Jane. Okay. <laughs> Can you see where you're going? Sure, sure. Hey, we have box and I'm all fed. All right. Now, everything you have there is for the junk pile, Pinky, except that last box. It's full of dishes, so be careful of the step. <laughs> Oh, Pinky, about those dishes, just put everything in the junk pile. <laughs> all right, let's slide this trunk against the wall. Whew. Heavy. Oh, out of all that auction junk, we never used a single piece. Well, that little sewing table would have been all right if we'd ever gotten the broken leaf fit. Well, it'll be in the garage any time you feel ambitious. You, darling, darling. Charlotte, are you there? You, Mrs. Pease. Yes, darn it, I'm here. I won't ask you to come upstairs, but I know that isn't necessary. You'll come anyway. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Hello, Jane. Oh, my. What a fascinating lot of antiques, Charlotte. Antiques, yes. Fascinating, no. Don't you just love to prowl around among the relics of your girlhood? You must feel so at home with these old things. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Piggs. That's why I feel so at home with you, dear. <laughs> My first husband was like that. He dearly loved antiques. Yes, he knew how to pick them, too. <laughs> you must have had a creaking romance. Lovely, Charlotte, just lovely. I remember our first little cottage. My husband furnished it entirely in Chippendale, just for me. Early American, you know. You were? <laughs> What a handsome brass vase, Charlotte. There in the corner. Well, that's a valuable thing, Charlotte. Lovely. 
It shouldn't be on the floor. Well, it belonged to my grandfather, and it was always on the floor. <laughs> That's a genuine mean, a true mean vase. I can tell from the shade. I see. What can you tell from the rubber mat under it? <laughs> oh. Oh, my. I didn't see that. But it's a perfectly natural to take Charlotte. Perfectly natural. One sees so many imitations of the real things nowadays. So many fakes. <laughs> You're just self-conscious, Mrs. Piz. <laughs> Say, maybe Mrs. Piz would like to have some of these things. A, a, a chair or something? Me? Put that old junk in my house? Oh. Why, Charlotte, after all, my house is furnished in blonde maple, you know. Well, I'll go now. I'll see you later. Well, don't bother. Phew. Blonde maple furniture? Yes, and I'll bet it's peroxide blonde. <laughs> place looks so neat, it doesn't look natural. No. You know what? I think I'll get all that junk of mine from the basement and put it up here now that there's room. Here we go again. Mm -hmm. Hey, Charlotte, Charlotte, the mailman came. Here's a letter for you. It's addressed to Little Cornflower Greenwood. Now, Pinky, enough is enough. <laughs> no, it just says Miss Charlotte Greenwood. Oh, Logan and Brogan, auctioneers. And, and the junk man came too, Charlotte. And boy, did I ever drive a hard bargain with him. Yes, sir. How much did you get, Pinky? Four dollars. Four dollars? But those old magazines, that broken old step ladder and all... Hey, this is interesting. Listen, it's from that auctioneer, and he wants to buy back a piece of that furniture, Jane. Buy back? Yes, that little sewing table with a broken leaf. I told you that was a nice little table. He says, a client of mine is interested in securing a table of the type you purchased at the Stonehill auction. I will be in Cranston on the 15th. 15th, at... but today. Yes. He says, if you still have the table in its original condition, I am authorized to offer you... Fi... Good heavens, $50? $50? Charlotte, oh, that's wonderful. Yes, that is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> we paid about a dollar and a half for that table. <laughs> Gee, 50 smackers. Oh, boy. Let's go bring it back in the house, can't you? Okay, where is it? I put it on the back porch with the stuff that goes in the garage. Down on the... The back porch? Oh. What, Pinky? What's the matter? I sold that pile of stuff to the junk man. What? Oh, Pinky! I thought you said you'd go. Oh, Pinky! Have you ever been on a treasure hunt? No. Why? Well, get your hat. You're going on one now. <laughs> No matter how many toothpaste you've tried, no matter how good a job you think your present brand is doing, change now to Pepsodent toothpaste. And in just one week, see if you don't find new brightness in your teeth, new sparkle in your smile. You see, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains Irium, the exclusive patented cleansing ingredient. And Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away. Quickly, easily, safely. Because it removes film, Pepsodent toothpaste with irium brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use Pepsodent toothpaste today. No wonder it's number one with the armed forces. So forget other brands you've tried. Change to Pepsodent toothpaste with irium. And in just one week, see if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See how it uncovers the natural brilliance of your smile. Ask for refreshing Pepsodent toothpaste, because Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. P-E-P-S-O-D-E-N-T, spelled Pepsodent. Use Pepsodent. Use Pepsodent. And now the famous hits and a miss thing, it had to be you. <laughs> Oh, no, 
somebody else gives me a thrill with all your folks. I love you still. Had to be you, wonderful you. Had to be you, just you. One fourteen Hinkle Street. Gee, Charlotte, I don't know his name. He's just the junk man. That's all. Well, that's great. That helps a lot. We not only sold a fifty dollar table, but we don't know who we sold it to. Oh, and I asked all around the neighborhood too, Charlotte. Nobody knows his name. Well, I'll try some more phone calls. Let's see now. I've made eight calls so far, and I'm only down to the D. Gee, junk men must do all right if there's that many in town. Well, I know one that's done all right today, at least. Junk man, keep the table quiet. I hope we can locate him. Gee, $50. Dunk Junk Company. If you bought it from Dunk, it's junk. Oh, fine. Hello, this is Charlotte Greenwood. I called you, uh, uh, Miss Greenwood. Greenwood, I'm calling. Lady, you've got the wrong number. We don't even handle dry wood, much less Greenwood. You want the Dunk Fuel Company. I'll get their number for I you. I don't want fuel. I then want... why do you want the Dunk Fuel Company? I don't want the fuel company. I want the junkyard. Oh, well, that's us. Why didn't you say so? Look, I called to ask about a sewing table, a small mahogany sewing table. Maybe you came to the right place. I got a nice one. At eight bucks, it's a steal. I don't want to buy a table. I want to sell one. Oh, well, that's a little different. Ninety cents. Look, I don't want to sell a table. I did sell one. I want to know if your driver bought one. Don't you know who you sold it to? That's what I'm trying to find out. Look, lady, one of us is confused. I'd love to bat the gap with you, but I'm very busy. Only kind of our driver didn't come to work today, and I've got to take the truck out myself. Well, why didn't you say that before? Well, that was a thoroughly messed up conversation. Well, we could take the car and drive around a while, Charlotte. We might find the man before he gets back to his office. Gosh, Charlotte, I feel terrible about selling that thing. I didn't pay any attention to it at all. I just told the junk man to take the whole pile. Hello? Hello, Miss Greenwood? Speaking. This is Mr. Logan of Logan and Brogan. You get my letter? Oh, yes, I did, Mr. Logan. Uh, the auctioneer. Yes, I got it, Mr. Logan. Well, I'm in town. I'd like to drop over and pick up the table. Well, I don't know, Mr. Logan. I don't think... Fifty dollars, Miss Greenwood. That's a lot more than you paid for it. Suppose I come right over. Oh, I don't think I could sell it today, Mr. Logan. Not today. I think I know what you're driving at, Miss Greenwood. All right, let's say $100. How's that? $100 for that table? Well, how much do you want for it, Miss Greenwood? Let's stop playing games. If this is a game, I'm sorry I didn't learn it sooner. I promised my client I'd bring back the table for him. I'll pay you any fair price for it. Oh, fair price. That's a fair price and warmer, but it's just that... Um, um, $200. 200 is great. It's twice as much as $100, but uh, really, Mr. Logan, I, I can't let you have the table today. This is my last offer, Miss Greenwood. I think it should be high enough. $300. $300? I'm speechless. I'll drop over about an hour and pick it up. Well, if this keeps up any longer, somebody will have to pick me up. Oh, $300. Doc, what are we doing? Well, there's only one thing to do, and that's find the table, and I'm going to find it or else. Or else what? Or else you'll be out 300 bucks. Well, that's 11 places so far, and nobody's been any help yet. Yeah, gee, I hope Jane is doing better than we are. At least you can get around faster with the car. It's, hey, Charlotte, look, it's him. It's him. Yeah. Yeah, there he goes. Well, what is it? The junk man down the street. Hey. Oh, he's getting in his truck. Hey, Mr. Junk Man, wait. Oh, he can't hear us. That's the guy. Catch him. Oh, now you're talking my language. Just stand back and let somebody run with him. Run. Junk Man, here I come. Where are 
Julia, what happened? Well, don't stand there. Help me out of this manhole. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of the sewing table. I'm through. How do I get into these things, anyhow? Well, oh, that's very easy, Charlotte. You just... Yes, it's much too easy. Who'd think of falling down a manhole? Nobody but me. Yeah, you sure do get some new angles, Charlotte. Well, we better get going if we're ever going to find that junk man. Suppose you, Pinky. I don't care if I never see that table again. But, Charlotte, you can't just sit there on the curb with your legs in the street. You get your feet run over. My heels are all run over now from running, the running around we've done. Look at my best shoes. Yeah, but... Oh, oh, oh look. Here comes Jane. Charlotte! Oh, she's got Veronica with her. Maybe they found out something. Hello, Veronica. Uh, hurry up, get in, kid. What do I mean, kid? We found the junk man, Charlotte. Oh, good. Did you find the table, though? And not yet, but we got a very hot clue. I picked Veronica up on her way home from work. Well, how did you get up so early, Veronica? I thought they were busy at the plant. Busy? My father's business should be so good. <laughs> I'll tell you how busy we are. I'm getting a two weeks vacation, so you know how I'm taking it. Two hours at a time. <laughs> that's, that's not a vacation. That's only recess. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm coming home, and Jane picks me up, and she's explaining the dile- dilemma, you know. How Pinky sells the sewing table to a junkman, and who is he? And the auctioneer wants to buy it for $300, and there is it. Yes, we know all the questions, but what are the answers? <laughs> Veronica, remember the junkman's name. Oh, right, please, Jane, I'm telling it, please. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm ting ting and ting ting and I'm beating my head so hard in what happened. You remember the junk man's name. Oh, you see, Jane, point killer. <laughs> Look, kids, I don't like to be too inquisitive. So we waited at the junkyard till the truck came in and asked the man about it. Would you mind starting at the end and telling this backwards? Where's the table? I'm coming to that. But when? Well, he remembered buying a whole lot of stuff from Pinky. But we looked all through the truck and everything was there except the sewing table. So then he remembered selling a table to a woman somewhere along here, on, on Lake Street. Uh, keep watching everybody. I don't mind watching, but what are we watching for? A mahogany sewing table to come slapping its drop leaves down the street? Oh, no, for a white house with a small porch. And... Here it is. Oh, I put 13 Lake Street. I am so excited. $300 for a little bitty table. Well, I hope this is it. Well, I hope the woman will sell it to us. This has got to be the place. If the guy bought it for me and this is the only place he sold the table, this has got to be it. Uh, ring the bu- uh, ring the bell, Pinky. We may as well get this over. Hey, Jane, kids, have I walked that much? What? How much, Charlie? Well, I'm shorter than Pinky. Oh, I see. I was standing on a lower set. <laughs> Phew, that's better. <laughs> I don't want any. Huh? How'd you get here so quick, madam? I sit all day and look out the window. Oh, excuse me. I took you for the mop salesman. Who did you take for the mop? Who do you think? <laughs> A fine start for our business deal. Madam, we're looking for a table. Yes, you see, a friend of ours sold it to you this morning. No friend of mine. And we wondered if, uh, well, um, how do you like it? Well, don't tell me the four of you came way out here just to see if I'm happy. What's the racket? Well, we want to buy the table. It's no good. It's ready to fall apart. Uh, that risk you'll take, uh, won't be, kids? If you don't want it, we'll uh, we'll buy it. How much? I paid $5 for it. Fair enough. I'll take 20 What? 5 that's a very fast profit. There's a war on, sis. Things go up fast here. Look, we'll take it. Uh, uh, just a minute. I don't get it, but the table's right here. Well, here's your money. Well, I've heard about these things, but it never happened to me before. That's how inflation happens. A lot of people running around with money that they aren't used to, paying fancy prices. Never mind the commentary, Mr. Calton, Mrs. Caltonborn. Let's have the table. <laughs> here you are. It's horrible shade of green to begin with, and the legs are ready to fall off. Hey, that's not the table. That's the one I bought this morning from the junk man. Oh, it's such a deal. Mm, that's all I need. Let's go home. But, Charlotte, that's not our table. It is now for $25. <laughs> And I'll tell you why The reason is I am too darn high I can't even sing a song to see Because the music is too low for me When I was young my mother said I'd kick the footboard off my bed 
I grew and grew and grew until my feet were on the window sill. And every dress my mother bought she used to find was much too short. It fitted me while in the store. But going home, I grow some more. And folks would say when I'd appear, look out, she'll break your chandelier. There was no knowing when I stopped growing. Folks would look at me and try to figure out how I was up on the snow. Fooling during my schooling, there was not a desk that I would fit. I had to stand, I could not sit. Each taxi cab that I get in, my knees are jammed against my chin. And every time they start a stop, I bump my head against the top. I spent some time in gay Paris to see the sights, but they saw me. For almost every single hour, they point me out as the Eiffel Tower. I seldom ever bathe, I fear, from out of sight I'll disappear. Because I know I'm just the type that might slip down the water pipe. I rarely ever see a show. I get in trouble when I go. Because the folks behind me frown and ask me if I won't sit down. Oh, I've got those long legs blue. Met a bombardier from a flying force. What a man to love and force. He took one look, began to shout. Baby, here's where I bail out. I met a G.I. Joe, six foot three. He was almost as tall as me. He took one look, said, listen, hon. You ought to try to be an anti-aircraft gun and let a sailor be an ocean pier. The moon was out, what an atmosphere. He took one look, dived in the sea, said, come on, short and finish me. Many little ladies like short men, short men. This little lady likes a man inside. Although a short man makes me fidget. The way things are today, I'll even take a midget rain to shine. Whoa, peace. Can't even get a man on land leave. Nothing to gain, all to lose. I've got those long, long, so long, long lay blue. Despite years of faithful brushing, despite any other toothpaste you've tried, see if your teeth aren't noticeably brighter in just one week after you change to Pepsodent toothpaste. You see, Pepsodent toothpaste contains irium, the exclusive patented cleansing ingredient. Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. Brings new brilliance to your teeth. So forget other brands you've tried. Change to Pepsodent toothpaste, and in just one week, see the difference in the brightness of your teeth, the sparkle of your smile. Ask for refreshing Pepsodent toothpaste, because Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. P-E-P-S-O-D-E-N-T, spell Pepsodent. You Pepsodent. You Pepsodent. And now back to Charlotte Greenwood, who's just entering her house with three other people who are tired, perplexed, and disgusted. Or to make a long story short, they're beat. Oh, I'm so disgusted, Charlotte. I don't feel anything anymore. I just want to sit down and fall apart. Oh. I don't get it, Charlotte. If everything was on the truck except the table, and if the only place the man sold the table was to that woman on Lake Street... And this is the table she bought from him. I don't get it either. Maybe it bounced off the truck. Oh, that isn't likely to happen without him knowing it. Maybe it fell down a manhole. That can happen. Says so right here where there aren't any knees left in my nylons. Oh, and he's such a mystery. Just like in the radio with Mr. and Mrs. Powell. <laughs> Veronica, you mean Mr. and Mrs. North. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. I got no sense of direction. <laughs> oh, that's probably the auctioneer now. Well, I'll oh. get it. How do you do? Oh, hello, Miss Greenwood. Oh, how do you do? Well, I'm all set. Got your money, $300. All right. Have you got the table for me? In words of one syllable, no. What? What do you mean? I sold it. For four dollars, including a truckload of other stuff. Oh, no. Oh, yes. To the junk man. Oh, what junk man? Where is he? What's his name? I'll have to find him. Well, I hope you have better luck than we did. And I'll give you a tip. 
Oh, watch out for that manhole. Uh, you wouldn't be interested in a nice broken down green table, uh, part of our desperate green. I'm not interested in anything but that little Ooh, soda. Oh, darn it! It's me, Woo! Woohoo! Mrs. Hurd, I'm here again, darn it. How did she get in here? I just dropped in to see if you... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Heck, you didn't. Uh, this is Mr. Logan, Mrs. Pitt. How do you do? I'm delighted. Simply delighted to meet any friend of Charlotte. Mrs. Pitt is a local distribution center for news, Mr. Logan. How do? Now, about that table, Miss Greenwood, if you can give me any help at all. Well, that's why I came over, Charlotte, about a table. I wanted to thank you for that little sewing table. Oh, that's a... What? Sewing table? What do you know about it? <laughs> oh, my, but there's something wrong. But Charlotte, you know, you asked me this morning if I wanted anything in that alley. Don't yes. you remember? Yeah, and you looked at it like it was yesterday's spinach. Do you remember? Oh, but on the way home, I saw this pile of furniture on the back porch. And Tinky had told me it was for the junk man. So I decided to take the little sewing table along. Oh, you've got it, Mrs. Kent. Oh, you're a lifesaver. Yes, I love them, Charlotte. I eat them all the time. And Look, I find them... <laughs> Mrs. Kent. Would you mind rushing home and getting that table for us as fast as your little legs will carry you? Oh, oh, why, Tinky? <laughs> and now, Mr. Logan, will you tell me something? Glad to. What on earth makes a broken-down little table like that one worth three hundred dollars? It isn't that good, surely. Well, I don't know why I can't tell you. Now that we've made our deal, Miss Greenwood. You see, the family that owned that furniture we auctioned had made a million-dollar business out of a secret recipe for a chili sauce they manufactured. Chili sauce? Yes. And when the old man died, nobody knew the formula. He'd always kept it in his head. Or so we thought. <laughs> Sounds like a plot for a novel. Oh, mm -hmm. it is. Uh-huh. Recently, we found out that he had written it down. <laughs> Not on paper, like anyone else would have done, but... Well, oh, watch this. You can still fall down and smash it, you know. Here's more, Charlotte. Here's the table. It's not good, Willie. It's awfully vicky. Now, my blonde maple... Oh, yes, we know, Mrs. Sid. We know. Ah, oh, thank heaven. Well, here's what happened, Miss Greenwood. Instead of writing the recipe down on paper, the old man wrote it on the bottom drawer in this little table. I hope you notice how much nicer it looks, Charlie. Somebody had scribbled all over the drawer, but I washed every bit of it off with soap and water. Oh, <laughs> the recipe... Gone. Mrs. Sid, you know you just washed out a million-dollar business with a five-cent piece of soap, but confidentially you did a good job because that chili sauce was terrible. Well, that winds up our visit to Charlotte's house tonight. But we invite you to come over next Tuesday and every Tuesday night at the same time to enjoy the Charlotte Greenwood program, written by Phil Leslie with Matty Malnick, The Hits and the Myths, yours truly Wendell Niles, Lorene Tuttle, Arthur Hugh Bryan, Sarah Burner, and starring Charlotte Greenwood. The door is never locked at 114 Hinkle Street. And so until next Tuesday night at the very same time, this is Charlotte Greenwood saying, So long, friends, Broadcasting Company.